1640 handheld 6.3 ISO 64Z98K. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Today I want to talk about storage. See if Express Type B to be precise. And see if Express Type B from Pergear. I have been very fortunate to collaborate with Pergear now for almost three years. Pergear have sent me all sorts of cards to test and review in that time. And I can say absolutely unequivocally, I have never had a CF Express Type B per gear card fail. It just simply has not happened. And at this stage, that is across probably something like 10 cards. Now, about four or five months ago, per gear sent me their new 2023 version of their highest end card for testing and feedback purposes. And I can tell you that that card, like every other card that I have, has worked brilliantly. In this episode, I wanna talk about the fact that CF Express Type B, it just simply continues to get cheaper and it really is a fantastic format as we move on from the CF, Compact Flash and SD era. Now I do say move on, from the SD era, even so really, there are no signs of that happening anytime soon, but I have to say, even when using the Z50, the Z30, even the Z8, and now the new ZF, I'm still going back and using SD some of the time, and I can still unequivocally say that I prefer CF Express Type B much more than that smaller, lighter, less robust and much older format. But ultimately it comes down to your camera manufacturer and what cards they're deciding to put into their cameras. In no way am I interested in starting a brand war and that is not what this video is about, and absolutely not. But CF Express Type B has been in the market to the best of my understanding, with one of Nikon's cameras, I think, being one of the first, if not the first camera to use it, which was the D5, first debuted in XQD. But it uses exactly the same pinning, it's exactly the same size, and both XQD and CF Express Type B slots are usually, if the cameras have been firmware updated, they are interchangeable. So this form factor in its two versions, XQD and CF Express Type B, they've been around for a long time. And from my perspective, the market has had plenty of time to embrace these. It might be like Fuji, for example, who do the same thing of having CF Express Type B and SD. Canon do it, Nikon do it. It's pretty common that camera manufacturers are one, hedging their bets, and two, they're actually allowing users to have a more modern format that's more robust, more future-proofed, and ultimately is actually faster, significantly faster than SD. And then we have Sony's implementation of SD. It's fantastic. People love SD cards. They're cheap. You can find them everywhere. It kind of makes sense from that perspective. Affordable everywhere. And what Sony has done, which is really smart, is they've got this hybrid slot that allows you to use CF Express Type A as well as SD. And that's cool. And Type A, by the look of it, because it uses one PCI lane and Type B uses two PCI lanes, Type A is always gonna be half the speed of Type B, and Type B is always gonna be half the speed of Type C. Now, Type C is ratified, it exists, but nobody's physically actually made a camera or made cards of type C. Yes, the most recently released 600 6.3 Prime. And just look at how small it is. And well, <laughs> it is beguilingly light. It should be. 600 mils, it should be more. There should be more going on here. And this is the power of a 
phase Fresnel lens, a PF lens. It has a special element in there that not only allows you to make lighter lenses, but also smaller lenses. And it certainly also helps with aberrations, with purple fringing. The full 600 millimeter first look will be coming very, very soon. But as you can see from these images that I have captured so far, it is a magnificent lens. Type B, and here it is here, this is the latest version of the Pergear Type B card. Now this is Gen 3, and you might be aware, or you might not be aware, that recently the association, the Compact Flash Association that runs all the ratification of all the different card formats, at least I think it's all of them, they recently gave us a new version of CF Express. And this was applicable to type A, type B, and type C, with Gen 4 doubling the bandwidth available. Which means this card is a Gen 3. The theoretical maximum limit of the Gen 3 CF Express Type B bus is 2 gigabytes per second, of which this card gets close to. So let's talk about this card just for a second. It has a sustained now that's pretty important when you're talking about video and high speed shooting. It has a sustained write speed of 1,500 megabytes per second. That's sustained. And as it's written here, it has a maximum read speed of 1,770 megabytes per second. And that's what this new iteration is about. It's about pushing Gen 3 tech because there's always some overhead lost whenever you're moving any files around. That's, that's just the way it goes. So you're never going to get the full two gigabytes. And that's okay. I think everybody understands that. So what we're seeing here from Pergear, I would guess, I would guess might be their last version of Gen 3. And maybe next year or the year after, we will start to see Gen 4. To the best of my understanding, there's actually no Gen 4 products in the market. In other words, there's no cameras which have hardware within their CF Express Type B slots, which allows them to utilize that Gen 4 speed, which is double two gigabytes becomes four gigabytes. So we might expect something like, and wait for it, 3,500 megabytes of read and we might get something like 3,000 megabytes or three gigabytes per second of write. That's the sort of thing that we might see in the future. And of course, those cards, because they are next generation, will be more expensive. We always pay more for more speed. Right now though, it's kind of irrelevant. As I said, there's no hardware that exists that will utilize it. And of course, our existing cards, whether they're Gen 2 or Gen 3, will of course work in Gen 4 hardware when it turns up. And you can look at my video here where I'm talking about what cameras might appear next year. Uh, we speculate on a Z9H, a Z6 III, uh, what else was in there? Z70, Z90. Of course, we might get a Z7 III. I mean, there's, there's lots of potential we would certainly expect, for example, and looking at my poll on what cameras people want next year, the Z6 III is leading by a country mile. That will certainly have at least one CF Express Type B slot. The big question is, will it be Gen 4? I'm not even sure we will need it to be Gen 4 because I'm not even sure it will be going fast enough to require it. At the end of the day, all of this is moot. The cards we have today will work in the all of the new cameras, and that's all that really matters. Now, the reason I talked about the fact that Gen 4 will be more expensive is because one thing that's super great about Pergear is not only from my personal use experience over almost a three-year period have I had zero failures, but Pergear's cards are absolutely some of the most affordable in the market. For example, the one terabyte card, this one here that I've been testing for the last 
three or four, maybe five months, that was just recently released is only 399 US dollars. Now you can also get a 512 megabyte card for $199. There's a two terabyte card for $599. And then now I'm super excited about, I'd love to get one of these, although they do get a little bit cavernous if you're putting images on them. And that is a four terabyte card. Absolutely unbelievable. And that four terabyte CF Express Type B card is $979. Anyway, if you use the links below, a very small portion of that does come back to the channel, which is great because it allows me to keep doing this. Now, Per Gear states on their website, and you can check this for yourself, that absolutely all of these new cards, the 2023 editions, work with every single Nikon camera that has CF Express Type B and works with all of the high-end functionality. So that is including up to 8.3K RAW at 60 frames per second. And that, I think, is the toughest thing that we are throwing at the camera and at our cards. So all of these cards from the 512 megabyte at 199 US dollars, all the way up to that four terabyte card, they can all handle every single thing that we can throw at them today. And of course, we also have Canon, DJI, Fujifilm, Panasonic, and RED also use CF Express Type B. And you can also use all functionality by the look of it from all of those cameras with these cards. There is just simply no asterisks. Pergear CF Express Type B series products will maintain the brand's usual five year warranty policy. Pergear also state that they have an APM, Adaptive Power Management System, which provides overheat protection, reassuring stability and reliability. And don't forget, Pergear also offer CF Express Type A cards in 80, 260, 520, and one terabyte sizes with the 80 gigabyte card being $99. That is very affordable for Sony users, all the way up to the one terabyte being 519 US dollars. There you go, new fast cards from Pergear. Thanks again, Pergear, for allowing me to test out this product. And like everything to date, they have continued to work flawlessly. That's all I can really say. I can only share my experience with you. Please let me know in the comments below, are you, have you used per gear cards? How are you finding them? Have you had the same experience? Because really what's more important than my, me, just one person, is all of you out there. That's a great sample pool when it's thousands of us. Way better. Let us know in the comments below. It's been so good to see you. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like.